Hi, we're here today to talk about uh, doing habitat inventories for Skyarius aberti or the Abert squirrel. The Abert squirrel is a, a great species. It can really tell us a lot about a forest. And um, they're a ponderosa pine obligate, which means that they live in, in forests dominated by ponderosa pine. And where they live generally tells us a lot about the health of that forest and, and what the characteristics are, oftentimes as a benefit to other wildlife species too. Um, so today we're here in this forest at about 6,500 feet elevation, and uh, we're gonna talk about a couple of the things we'd measure when we look in a forest uh, for the suitability of a bird squirrel habitat. I've laid out a 1 20th of an acre plot here. So I'm gonna take a plot sample um, from, the, there's a white flag up here, Back behind me, there's a pistol grip ponderosa pine that's off there. Goes down here on the other side of that old skid trail, and then back along this this hundred foot tape here that's stretched out to 59.7 um, feet. And that lets us know this is the area we're going to look at and concentrate in. Um, anytime we do kind of any kind of sampling, we're generally taking a small piece of a much bigger hole, and then we're taking what we find in these smaller pieces. And extrapolating that across the hole. So for abird squirrels we know there's a couple of things that they really favor for in their habitat. Uh, one of those is trees that are somewhere between a 10 inch dbh or diameter at breast height to a 25 inch plus dbh or diameter at breast height. Um, they really need those trees of about 14 inches for nesting trees and 25 inch uh, plus for feed trees that have consistent production of cones. We also know that they like crown connections. They like the crowns to be connected. They're arboreal. They're most efficient and most safe when they move from crown to crown and not have to drop down on the ground. Uh, so they like these connections. Um, they like groups of trees, kind of clumps of trees, then with a stringer or crown connection to another group or clump of trees, and then a stringer and a crown connection to another group of trees. They also do like some prevalence of what we call these blackjack these little dense groups of trees, because that provides a secondary food source from them. Those trees uh, shade the ground and create an environment that's really good for fungus production. So some of the measurements we'd start doing here are things like taking diameter at breast height. I'm gonna move down to this tree here. It's one of the largest that we have inside this 1 20th of an acre plot. And I'm gonna take this measurement around the tree with what's called a DBH tape. Stretch that around, come here and see that this has a DBH of about 16 and a half inches. So if you remember, uh, we're looking for trees anywhere from 10 to 25 plus and 14 as a minimum for a nest tree. So really quickly, you can look through this plot and see that we don't really have any trees in here that are much bigger than this that would really meet those qualifications for a consistent feed tree. The other thing we'll do sometimes is we will look for evidence of feeding um, cones that have been fed upon or twigs that have been fed upon. These have been fed upon, um, but most likely these have been fed upon by our chicory or our pine squirrel, which is pretty, pretty prevalent in this forest here. Additionally, what we'd be looking for is not only these DBH of trees, but the total number of trees that are in here, um, as well as our basal area. Two different factors we'll talk about probably in another post. We've got this 100 foot tape stretched out here. And this would be another place where we would take some different inventories along here, walking and looking at canopy interconnection at every four foot interval using a moose horn or some kind of myopic scope that would allow us to look up and estimate if we have consistent coverage and interconnectedness of that crown. Skya cerberti are really neat little animals, tasseled squirrels down in the Southwest. These are just a couple of the different methods we might utilize to evaluate a habitat for them. Thanks so much.